Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bruce Williams channel. In this video, I'd like to just talk about my experience visiting the National Watch and Clock Museum in Columbia, Pennsylvania. This is a beautiful place in Amish country in Pennsylvania, and it houses North America's largest collection of timepieces from every era, from every locale. There are actually 13,000 pieces in the museum and counting. You can see everything from a German table clock produced in the 1500s to a large 1,000 pound, 11 foot tall angle clock from the 1800s and everything in between. There are vintage Puddock and Lange and Breguet pocket watches. There is a collection of European grandfather clocks, wall clocks. There is even RGM's serial number one from his first uh, watch that he produced on display there in the museum. So really, it, it it's a dream if you're a watch enthusiast like me, just to go to a place and see so much, such a vast array of fascinating items that you just can't find anymore. They're rare. In some cases, they're one of a kind. And to be able to experience these pieces and know that they're being preserved for future generations is just a really exciting thing. I can get behind that. So let me tell you about my experience. I went out to Pennsylvania to film at Brent L. Miller Jewelers in Lancaster, the birthplace of Hamilton. And one morning I went with Brad, who's a sales associate at Brent Miller Jewelers, and we drove down to Columbia and we visited, well, obviously we visited the museum. On one side of the street, there is a school of horology. On the other, there's a clock tower, which is really cool. It actually works too, and you can see uh, the inner workings through windows on the outside of the tower. You enter the large building and you see the research center directly ahead. And that research center is the largest horological library and research center in the world. It really is, uh, really is pretty impressive. I was granted permission to film in the museum and I actually was personally led through the museum by the new executive director, Rory McAvoy, which was a really cool experience to meet him, uh, kind of go behind the scenes and get that personal tour of all of those amazing items that are present in the museum. Now, here's a list of the different galleries that are contained in the building. I would recommend planning at least one hour uh, to spend if you're just going to make your way through the museum. And that's on the short end. You can plan for longer and still be fascinated with all of those different items that you can uh, take a look at and learn some of the history related to your favorite brands, your favorite technologies and uh, their origins and whatnot. It really is quite an experience for a watch enthusiast and also just a lover of history. One of the things that I liked was the opening exhibit where you saw various types of building clocks and standalone clocks and to hear everything ticking. You could hear 20 different significant gears meshing together. It was music. It's music to a watch enthusiast ear. So that was really cool to see. One of my favorite things was the angle clock, which was uh, one of the highlights of the stop. This was designed by Steven Angle, who lived in the 1800s and died in the early 1900s. He was born in Pennsylvania and uh, was a watchmaker, a jeweler, a businessman, and an inventor. And for almost 20 years, he created this massive clock that is so intricate. And you can watch uh, different things happen. There's a centurion that walks around the top of the clock, guarding it, keeping an eye out. There is Christ and the devil is also present. He'll pop out from a, diff a few different places and Christ will nod his head to each one of the apostles as they pass him. Uh, th there's just so much going on with this angle clock. It really is uh, really is very cool to take a look at. And uh, right next to it was a player organ, which isn't necessarily directly related to the angle clock, but still from the same general era. And I really enjoyed hearing that. I mean, you just don't hear things like this very often. You don't get to experience that up close in this type of situation. So I absolutely love that. Took the time to go through the museum and then uh, you end, you go through the gift shop and uh, you can exit the building in full transparency though. I'm not being sponsored by the National Watch and Clock Museum or anything like that. I wasn't paid to film or to do a video about 
my experience there. I just had a great time in doing it, going through the museum, going through the research center, even going back into the back room with Rory, the executive director, and being personally shown some of the rare and vintage pocket watches that will be making their way into the exhibit, into the museum at a future point. So that being said, I just wanted to give you a taste of my experience and some of the things that I thought as I went through the exhibit and saw just the rare items that I won't have the opportunity to see anywhere else. And some of the things that I learned uh, really was a fantastic experience that I highly recommend if you're in Pennsylvania or within a reasonable driving distance and you would like to visit uh, the museum and see the research center, possibly become a supporting member and enjoy free admission to the museum and access to the library, receive the uh, regular publications that go out to members and enjoy the online forum. If you, you know, have a question, let's say you inherit <laughs> a carriage clock or something and you want some expert advice, you can go on the forum and connect with other watch enthusiasts that are a part of the group. So if you're interested in that, all of the links will be in the description. Thanks for watching today, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.